Welcome and today I will be teaching a lesson on a couple perspectives or mindsets. While what I'm talking about is not really to be taken literally, we sometimes get in a mindset where we get narrow-minded and we can find ourselves because we're too afraid to live and to step into dreams and callings. So, if you have your Bibles, Isaiah 55 and 9 states the following. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Flipping over to Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil give you an expected end. And then in the New Testament, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity, and Lord, that I may speak your words, and that they may go forth, and they may challenge us to think beyond the narrow confines of our minds sometimes, to dream big dreams, and to know, Lord, that you have great plans for us. I ask that you open our hearts and our minds to receive this word, that your words flow through this vessel, and Lord, that lives can be touched and blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. The thought I would like to speak today is hallways or highways. Which perspective are you? We know that God has great plans for our lives. We know there's so much in store if we would just submit to Him and trust His ways. We can live sheltered lives in our spiritual homes, traveling from one room to the next, and never really growing, just navigating the hallways of life. Or, as the saying goes, we can hit the open road and taking major highways to destinations unknown as the Lord guides our route. So, again, what will it be? Will it be highways or will it be hallways? Let's take a look at hallways to start. A hallway, by definition, is simply a long passage with doors into rooms, either on one side or the other, or both. They're usually narrow. Some hallways and castles and mansions and palaces are big, but for the most part, hallways are simply a thoroughfare to a room. The rooms connected to the hallway never end. It's always the same. You're always going to go in the same rooms. You're always going to see the same things. You're always going to have that just limited focus. You can redecorate the hallway. You can even repaint it. But the rooms stay the same. The narrow confines of the hallway stay the same. It's the same routine every day. Prayer, read your Bible, go to church, and do it again tomorrow. And that's a great start, but can you sustain it? Is that all your walk with God is going to be? Just a simply a hallway experience? You run the risk of complacency. You stay inside the comfortability of your four walls. No one ever reached. No one ever talked to because of fear of rejection. Or maybe you're just too shy to do so. You can find yourself to a simple narrow hallway with four walls. Prayer, Bible reading, and church are essential, and I wouldn't dare criticize any one of those or make light of them. But God has called us to so much more. We see his great commission in the end of Matthew to go and to teach, to make disciples. Always being narrow, find the number of people that can navigate them. 
narrow-mindedness can close off the avenue for faith. Do you want to live the same colors, the same space, the same ideas, the same crowdedness, never really seeking the blessings of God Almighty? True, his blessings aren't all there is in this life, but he does desire to make us the head and not the tail. Don't you want an abundant, overcoming life? Or do you want to hang out near the wall like Abimelech did and risk being killed by your enemy? We can hang out in the hallways and we can enjoy just a little bit of what God has for us. Or we can explore. We can go outside our four walls. We can head to the highways. Hallways also have limited potential, unless they're long and grandiose, as I said earlier. Even still, the number of rooms attached, the number of lights hung, and the overall use have their limits. As I said, also, her hallways are just merely a thoroughfare. They pass through to get to a destination, only to traverse it again and again. While there might be multiple hallways in the house, you're still going to go down the same hallways. You're still going to go down the same rooms. You're still going to be confined to just that same old space. The same grind, the same routine, the same rooms, the same amount of light. Don't you want an open space? Don't you want bigger dreams? Don't you want to step out? Don't you want more light in your life? More of his light shining in you? Don't you want to dream and not be crushed by simplicity? Or is it comfortability that you seek? There's a danger of comfortability. It's time we leave the, behind the four walls of our spiritual homes. There's a world that needs Jesus. And they're not going to know about him if we're just going to be too scared to venture out. We're just going to be confined to the narrow hallways of life. There's a calling in your life. There's a calling in everyone's life. If you seek God, trust in Him, He'll reveal it to you. He'll show you where to go. He'll help you. We need dreamers like Joseph. We need people not afraid to pursue like Paul and give it all for the gospel. We need trailblazers. We need people will take to the highways. So that brings me to the other perspective. Highways. Interstate 90 is the longest highway in the United States, and it spans from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way to Seattle, Washington. 13 states that it goes through. 3,020 miles long. If you're heading eastbound, you'll find 829 exits. If you're heading westbound, 830. Over 800 potential exit points for you to explore. And these exits lead into cities and connecting to other highways. The beauty of highways are the possibilities. It's true, you can get lost, but if God's your guide, you have nothing to fear. When we compare hall highways to hallways, the potential of greater dreams increases exponentially. We're not confined to a single narrow space. The open road will let us drive in multiple lanes. We'll be able to see God's handiwork. And we can travel in so many ways. Sometimes when we travel, it will just be us seeking what God has called us to, to be. Alone with God, we find a solitude. We find uh, a peace, and we're not distracted. But other instances, we'll see us with friends or church family or even our uh, immediate family. Sometimes we'll have to catch a bus or chauffeur may take us to a destination. And in these moments, God is simply saying, rest. I'm going to help you get to where you're going. 
You just need to rest in me. Trust in me. There are times things may go slow and God wants us to see things. He wants us to learn things before we arrive at our destination. Highways offer so much potential. The weather is another element that we encounter. Maybe we run into rain or snow or a storm. It can be difficult to drive in these conditions, but sometimes that's part of life. We're going to run into storms. We're going to run into hiccups and bad weather. We may have to seek shelter, and it may seem that our dream is delayed. But if that's the case, trust God, because it'll be worth it. Your dreams are so much greater on the highways of life in spite of the storms and the things that come your way. Don't be scared of the storms and waste potential and waste opportunities just to stay inside four walls and confine yourself to a narrow hallway. Light will give way to night and darkness will creep in. But at this time, there's a stillness. Others are asleep and you're on the highway of life driving, pursuing what God has called you to pursue. You're on the road to your dream. Use this time to talk to him. Talk to him in your darkest moments. Talk to him in your greatest moments. Talk to him all the time. In that stillness, when there's no distractions, talk to the Lord. The light, it's great. The sun's warmth is amazing. I love driving in the daytime. I don't prefer to drive at night. I get sleepy. But even in the night, there's a special moment. In that quiet, peaceful time, we can seek the Lord, and He can guide us safely through even the darkest moments of our life. The darkest moments will build character. And when we get to our dream, when we look back at all we went through, whether it be storms, whether it be darkness, or whatever the situation, it'll all be worth it. Construction and detours can slow you down. You can get in behind the construction and it can take you an hour to get just through two exits or you get in a traffic jam. Sometimes construction will take you off the highway and you'll have to take a detour and lead you places where you didn't intend to go. However, what is God teaching you in this moment? We're so quick to be negative-minded, but if our perspectives would shift, we try to find the good in the moment. Don't be in a hurry to obtain what he has for you. Don't fear the detours. He may be trying to show you something. God is always, always up to something. Nothing takes him by surprise. He doesn't react. His response is already. God has foreknowledge. He sees it all. He knows. And he's not surprised by your situation. We need to listen. We need to have faith. We need to trust in him. After all, he is God. And we are not. Right? The highways offer things that hallways do not. There are dangers, there are obstacles, but a greater danger lies in the comfortability of the hallway. We become accustomed to our surroundings, we grow complacent. Why do we need God when everything's so familiar? I know how to get from one hallway to the next. I know the rooms, I know the layout, so I'm good. I don't, I don't, I don't think I need God right now. Hallways can lull us to sleep. A hallway mindset, complacency, can make us just sink back to former things or to grow, to procrastinate, to be lazy. But the highway will see us constantly seeking our navigator, Jesus Christ. We're always going to have to be in touch with him because we may not know where we're at. We may not know the direction. We may not know the layout of the area as every area is new as we travel these highways. 
We've got to trust him as we venture into the great unknown. When you lie dormant, allowing so many dreams and potentials to go unexplored, will you dare to dream? Will you trust God in the highways of life, no matter what comes your way? Let your faith grow. Let your trust in him grow. Step out. It's not a risk. It's faith. And faith will take you places. But we got to get past the mindset of just hallways, hallways, hallways. There's a world to explore. There's dreams. There's people that need Jesus. And we have to reach them. And we won't do that. Just navigating hallways. We need highways. I pray you were challenged to reconsider some aspects of your life. To rethink some things and dare to pursue God and the dreams he has for you. Know that you were created for a reason. You were fearfully and wonderfully made, so the Bible says. His plans for you are beyond your wildest imagination. Pray you were blessed and the grace and peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. God bless.